Hello everyone. So it's been a long time since I've uploaded a video. It's been almost <laughs> a, a full month. But uh, hey, I'm back. <laughs> Don't worry, uh, I didn't catch COVID or something like that. It was that just that uh, life happened and um, I just had a ton of stuff to do, a whole bunch of deadlines, and then uh, I wasn't able to make any videos. Not only that, but uh, I've been working <laughs> on the uh, Bipolary, the uh, Class A headphone amplifier that we've been designing since the beginning of the channel. And uh, this has taken me uh, uh, a whole lot of time. And that, together with all the other stuff that was happening, uh, just got a bit chaotic and I just uh, started pushing stuff um, to uh, more around uh, this time of the year. So hey, here we are. Um, so, as you can clearly see, uh, I've got uh, both of the uh, uh, headphone amplifier PCBs are uh, populated. I still haven't uh, adjusted the trimmers and uh, done any tests, so uh, we're going to do this together. I've also prepared a, uh, and soldered up the uh, board that will be used to interface with the mains. And, uh, what's in here is the enclosure that we're going to be uh, using for this. So in this video, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, mount these boards in the enclosure, I'm going to uh, um, adjust their bias and everything like that. Now if we have time, I'm going to uh, do some uh, measurements on the output to see the uh, real uh, THD figures and stuff like that, and maybe we can uh, do that, but let's see. Uh, if this video starts getting a bit too long, I'm just going to cut it there and then uh, we can do the measurements in another video, all right? Uh, so, let's begin. Uh, first of all, uh, we've got the uh, two PCBs here. Pretty nice. They uh, look great. And uh, we've got the transformer and the main interface PCB. So, this uh, didn't take a whole lot of time for me, but uh, the most... Uh, time-consuming part was for sure this thing. So, this is the enclosure I'm going to... Uh, I still have to prepare some uh, side plates here. They are actually already prepared here, but uh, still need to uh, <laughs> um, paint them. So, yeah, gotta primer them up, put paint so that it looks nice like this. So, as you can see, it has a very nice... Uh, that glossy, very nice uh, uh, matte finish, black, so that uh, it fits with the uh, uh, bench here. That's everything here is basically black. So yeah, <laughs> I went with this, uh, and this took me uh, a very long time to do. That's the reason why the videos uh, uh, <laughs> I wasn't releasing any videos because the, these boards they were uh, already sorted out for quite a long time. But uh, I've decided to take this uh, as a, a test bed. To actually do something that I've never done before and I really wanted to learn, which was, uh, well, basically doing some uh, AutoCAD work. So, uh, <laughs> this is it. I've done the whole thing in CAD, as you can clearly see. So, it was all done in uh, 3D. Had models of the uh, PCBs, the transformer, all of the connectors and stuff like that. So, as you can see, this stuff was pretty time-consuming. Uh, and now, by the way, all the uh, DWG files, the AutoCAD files, and also like the uh, the components, the blocks that uh, I've used here, they are all on the uh, Bipolary GitHub repository. So if you want this, you can just go there and check it out and uh, <laughs> use it to your heart's content, whatever you want. It's just all open source. So, yeah. Uh, as you can see, uh, what you've seen here, this thing, is uh, basically this. So the good thing about doing this stuff in CAD is that uh, when you're done it takes a whole lot, <laughs> a lot of time, but when you're done you have uh, everything ready. You can just uh, um, yeah, get the measurements from here and uh, start cutting. For example, in this case, since this was sheet metal, uh, I just could uh, start cutting from there. Uh, if you're going to be using a uh, um, pre-made case, like one of those enclosures from China or something like that, that we've used in a previous episode, hey, then the front panel, you can just uh, <laughs> design the front panel like this, and then you can just print it out and uh, uh, center punch the holes and do everything <laughs> with the uh, template. That way it's a lot easier than going around and measuring stuff on, the front on, a, on a front panel. So yeah, it, uh, it really pays to uh, do something like this in CAD. 
in my case it was uh, unnecessary i could have done what i've always done my whole life which is just to uh, uh, do some a couple of drawings on a piece of paper and then just go in and um, measure stuff up on the uh, uh, material and go from there but i was like okay now i really want to learn this to make stuff uh, that's a bit more professional in the future so i took the time to do this with uh, something like this which is a kind of a moderate um, intermediate level stuff and uh yeah it, it really paid and uh, I'm, I'm really glad i did this i learned a, a ton and uh so yeah uh, this is real fun to design as you can see we got here also the uh, side plates like this so this is also the first time that i have ever uh done any sort of a sheet metal work so it was really nice doing all the bending and uh, cutting yeah, and this is going to be the yeah, top. So I I haven't done this. Um, I I just want to get this done, get everything in here mounted up, so that I can uh, uh, fit the side plates. So they're going to mount kind of like this. Yep, they're basically going to be like this, and uh, then there will be a top plate that just comes in here and uh, bolt everything together and uh, I just want to do this uh, and when it's all done I'm going to actually do the top plate and uh, finish it all up so maybe in the next video we can do that we can do the measurements and uh, that because hey, if we want to do the uh, true performance especially the uh, signal to noise ratio we need this whole thing uh, all uh, buttoned up but hey for now let's just do this thing okay so <clears throat> let me explain how we're going to uh, proceed with this as you can kind of figure out from uh, <laughs> this view right here of course uh, as it was uh, printed on a uh, uh, simple laser printer monochrome uh, with just uh, uh, black or white there is just no shades of gray in here this is a bit chaotic but you can kind of figure out there there are the, these two boards are basically going to be stacked together like this and you basically have the transformer and then this board on top of it um, so we are going to be uh, using standoffs like these to uh, uh, space the boards out and the layout is basically going to look like this we'll have this in here the transformer this board will sit somewhere around in here and this will be placed like this so yeah it's a very simple and then this just stacks up in here so we have a, a ton of space here to uh, wire everything up make everything look very tidy and uh, that's what I'm going to be <laughs> doing right now okay uh, but before I go before I uh, do all the wiring and uh, come back I just wanted to uh, talk a bit about something so as you may have noticed uh, the uh, amplifier I've called it bipolary there is a very good reason for that uh, when we started up with the uh, with this idea um, I just wanted to do a, a minimalist design of a headphone amplifier class A so this was the uh, prototype that I've made and uh, as you can see it's it's pretty uh, small and uh, it fits in here where the uh, actual uh, amplifier is on a board no. The thing about this is, uh, uh, I wanted it to be 100% bipolar because since that's a, a bit easier to understand, there's a lot, uh, a lot less variations as there are with fats. And uh, as soon as I started uh, thinking about the design, I just said, hey, I'm just going to go all out on this one. <laughs> Something that I've always wanted to do in a project, <laughs> just really just uh, go nuts and uh, do everything as overkill as possible. So I would decide, hey, uh, this is going to be it. Uh, so uh, I would decide to go dual mono. That's why you can see uh, each board has their own uh, power supply section. Uh, again, total overkill for no reason at all. It's just going to have a shared ground here in the uh, output since it's a headphone. <laughs> if this was a, a, a two sets of speakers, then it would be a, a much more productive thing to make a dual mono because then the grounds are going to be uh, separate and they can be floating 
But uh, in a design like this, it's completely useless. But hey, again, I just wanted this to be uh, an exercise in, in uh, over-engineering. And uh, that's where the name bipolar -y actually comes from. It's because it is a fully bipolar design, but it's also because it's a very uh, bipolar design where you have a very minimalist circuit like this, and I've just uh, blown it out of proportions <laughs> into something that is completely overkill. And uh, hey, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. It's a, it's a fun thing to do <laughs> every now and then, and this is going to be my, uh, the main way that I'm going to be uh, listening uh, to everything on my headphones here on the... Uh, bench so hey it was a uh, quite fitting i don't mind the uh, the space that this thing is going to be uh, taking and yeah i just wanted to uh, clarify that so don't now look at this as a, a a small bit of kit as you can see it's uh, massive it's literally the size of my headphone and uh yeah <laughs> it's a very bipolar design in every sense of the word <laughs> So yeah, and if you wanted to build something like this, I'm probably just going to uh, uh, throw these boards on, up on Tindy. So if anyone wants something like this, hey, uh, when I do this, when I come around to do this sort of stuff, I'll probably just leave a, a, a link down in the video description. But everything again is open source, so you can just uh, grab this from uh, uh, your <laughs> from the uh, uh, GitHub uh, repository and just send the bomb the not the bomb the gerbers to your favorite uh pcb manufacturer and uh, build them your own if you want uh so yeah and hey, if you want you can just grab the uh prototypes they are also in the uh repository and you can just build a uh, stereo amplifier from this one just copy the uh design here and hey you've already got your uh, stereo amplifier uh, in a very small package, then you can just run it off a uh, external power supply and hey, you're good to go. So you can even just design your uh, uh, the uh, power supply, a shunt power supply, just one of these and uh, hey, <laughs> you're good to go for the both of them. So there you go. So yeah, uh, now I'm just going to uh, start um, to first uh, fasten everything in here and then I'm going to prepare all the uh, connections and all the the wires so that uh, they're all nice and tidy and then I'll be right back. So I finished um, assembling most of it as you can uh, definitely see. Uh, it's still missing the uh, second board. Uh, I've only wired up the uh, left channel as it is right now uh, because we need access to the bottom board before um, we can put this one because we still need to uh, adjust the two uh, potentiometers that are in the board. The one that uh, adjusts the uh, regulator voltage and the other one that's going to adjust the bias for the output. So we get the, the uh, most amount of headroom possible. Now yeah, as you can clearly see it's, uh, <laughs> it's looking uh, quite nice. There you go, the transformer is in there, the front panel. I've managed to not scratch it. It was a very difficult with all the tools and the limited space that I have in here, but uh, I did <laughs> manage to uh, do this. Uh, the back, same thing. I magically didn't scratch it. It uh, looks uh, quite nice. Bottom, that's a bit scratched, but hey, it's the bottom. No one's going to care. So, uh, yeah, it's most of it in there. Now, one thing that I forgot to uh, mention, yeah, sorry about this, uh, I'm just doing this uh, a bit uh, fast because I, I have a ton of stuff that I need to take care of for the year ends. And, uh, so the videos are just kind of, kind of uh, being uh, pushed out. But uh, by the way, uh, this video, I'm not going to do the, uh, the whole measurement on this. I'm, I'm still going to uh, release another one, preferably before the year ends. Okay, so uh, just uh, I'll try to do that, okay? But one thing that I didn't mention, I built this board first, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to use my uh, my um, metal film resistors, because they uh, have lower noise and all that sort of stuff, and then I just used them, and uh, I realized that <laughs> I was missing some uh, values, as you can see. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, they are all in the uh, power supply side of things, so they are not in the audio path. So uh, this is a bit of a mishmash. But um, seriously, I just hate how metal film resistors and uh, through-hole packages look. I think they just look silly. I really don't like them. 
Um, so for the second one, I just went, okay, I'm just going to uh, put them all the uh, regular uh, uh, carbon resistors and not going to worry about it. These are all uh, uh, very nice quality resistors. So uh, hey, uh, those metal films are also very nice quality, all viche and stuff like that. But I just uh, I I like the the way that this looks. Okay, so I just went with it. I I doubt I'll be able to hear the difference in noise, but we will be able to measure it. And hey, if uh, if this one performs very much differently in a noticeable way, if it's if it isn't just measurable but uh, actually uh, noticeable to my ears then I'll probably just uh, desolder all the metal film resistance and just put uh, the carbon stuff in there because hey I just like the way <laughs> that this looks and uh, I don't mind a little bit of noise as long as it's not excessive and as long as it's not a, a, a noisance so, yeah so there it is so that's why we have a, a different uh, uh, not a different layout a different look between two boards, I didn't run out of metal from resistor. It's just that uh, I just like the way that this looks. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, what we're going to do? We're going to do the first power up. I still haven't uh, hooked up power yet to this, so uh, I hope it uh, uh, doesn't explode <laughs> or release the magic smoke. That would be really sad. But uh, I have uh, uh, tested everything individually without actually uh, putting power to it, uh, putting mains. But I did all the continuity tests, and uh, hopefully uh, we won't have any surprises. Uh, so yeah, um, let me uh, rearrange the bench. I'm going to uh, mount a GoPro to um, uh, film the uh, multimeters. Then we are going to um, hook this thing up, uh, actually adjust uh, the potentiometers, and I'll go through all the, that uh, procedure. Uh, the procedure, by the way, is uh, I've decided to print it on the back of the PCB. Just as a good measure, because hey, I had a lot of space. So yeah, uh, let's go for this. Hey, just a quick one before I actually uh, rearrange the bench here. Uh, I just uh, noticed that I forgot to talk about something. As you can see in here, uh, there is a fuse holder that's just not connected to anything. Uh, the reason for that <laughs> is that I've soldered up this board. This was the first thing that I did for um, before even starting to design this uh, case, I soldered up this board, and I've uh, and, and when I was doing the uh, ECAD work, I put a, a fuse holder in the board and then all that stuff. So then when I got this, I just soldered it all up, and um, then I went to design this uh, case, and I I don't even ask me. I just had like the uh, the most like insane brain fort ever and I just uh, I, I've done a 3d model of the fuse holder and I was holding it up and I was doing all that sort of stuff and I put it in the case and only after I've done everything I've done this this stuff okay here it is the fuse holder as you can see and I after doing everything and actually <laughs> manufacturing this and uh, doing all the holes as soon as I mounted this thing, I just looked at this fuse holder and at this fuse holder, and I was just like, oh man, I can't believe I done this. So yeah, it was like two weeks, <laughs> one week doing uh, this whole cat work, and I didn't spot that I already had a fuse in place, and I didn't need this, so uh, yeah. So that was really sad. But then I, I had already done all this, this work, and I was just like, okay. I'm just going to put a, fa a fuse holder in here and just connect it to absolutely nothing. And uh, yeah, I could have just uh, wired this up to here, but I just thought it just wouldn't look good. So I just went with it. So this is going to be stuck in here. And in the future, if I want to do something, I can actually wire it up. I can do something. But hey, the way it is, it's just a dummy fuse holder to uh, uh, plug up a hole. Okay, so yeah. Now, uh, back to the actual content. So, uh, I've already uh, set up the bench here. So the first thing that we're going to do, we are going to uh, adjust the uh, voltage regulator on the, uh, the left channel. Uh, I don't think I have a uh, schematic handy right now. Uh, I don't. Let me, let me just grab a schematic. Here we go. <laughs> now that we have the schematic, this is the schematic of the board. 
And uh, what we need to do is we need to adjust R9 here, this potentiometer here. And uh, what it's just going to do is it's just going to set the uh, voltage ratio here in the output. So we are looking for a, a, a pretty stable uh, 12 volt supply. So uh, that's what we are going to be doing, okay? So it's this potentiometer here. And uh, if you want to know more about this, if you haven't been uh, following along, uh, there is a, a, a whole value video um, dedicated to the shunt voltage regulator. I'll probably, if I remember, to link it up here in a card. So yeah, that's it. So now back to this. <laughs> so the first thing that you need to do is, uh, so first of all, let's, uh, let's power this thing up. Okay. So yeah, I've decided to go with a Speakon connector. Uh, that's a uh, very bad for carrying mains. Uh, this is completely not advisable, I know. I know, I know, I know. But uh, the thing is, Speakon connectors, they are just very easy to mount. The, it's just a three holes, two holes for the uh, uh, mounting screws and then one hole for the uh, uh, body of the connector. And uh, it's a lot easier than having to uh, play around with uh, uh, freaking files and trying to file the uh, profile of an IEC connector. Okay, so that's why I use Speakons on my designs. And yeah. Uh, as long as I'm not doing anything, if I'm doing stuff with plastic, then hey, the, an IEC connector is very easy to uh, file out. But if you're doing stuff with metal, I just don't have the uh, uh, will to do that. So, uh, speak on connector, it's, uh, it's turned off. But that's the reason why I've used this speak on. Okay, I know it's wrong, but the thing is, I'm the only one using this. There is just no harm in this, okay? So, let's turn it on. And the uh, neon indicator here lights up. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, I can touch the case. It's not a problem. It is earthed, as you can see. Uh, so yeah, I won't touch this because there is a live mains voltage all around here. So stay clear of that. Now, nothing has blown up. Uh, the LEDs have all lit. So let's... Uh, Let's see what we get, okay? So here in the multimeter, what I'm going to be uh, doing is I'll be probing uh, TP1, which is the uh, test point for the uh, voltage regulator. So let's take a look there. Okay, so we are getting around 14.3 volts. Uh, and to adjust this, first thing that you gotta do is you need to remove these two uh, jumpers right here uh, and what that does is uh, if you look here in the schematic um, you can see that just uh, this okay you can see that there are uh, two capacitors here and these capacitors they are across the potentiometer so uh, I've put these two jumpers here that when you remove they uh, are out of the circuit so that you can adjust this because if these capacitors are here and you start to adjust this uh, these capacitors are going to make uh, your life hell because uh, whatever adjustment you do here, it will take literally seconds for that adjustment to uh, translate into a different voltage. Okay, so that's the reason why uh, these jumpers are here and why you need to remove them to uh, adjust this. Uh, but the good thing is when you uh, plug them back in, uh, these uh, two uh, capacitors, they really smooth out every sort of, any sort of ripple here in the output it's it's really great and it makes uh, the whole uh uh feedback circuit a thousand times more stable and uh uh <laughs> less uh, uh frequency dependent here on the output okay so now let's adjust that and take care not to uh electrocute it so here we go probing the task point and I want to get this close to uh, 12 volts. So uh, let's see, if I go to the right, I'm going to increase it. So oh, let's go back. Oh, it goes. Oh, right. This is a 10 turn pot, but uh, it is still pretty finicky. Oh, that's right enough. Oh, So yeah, 
there it is. That's uh, that's good enough. Okay, so that's a uh, 12.02, 12.01, and it's just going to uh, uh, float around. That's just normal. So uh, one thing that we can do is let's uh, plug in the jumpers and try not to electrocute myself and see how that uh, changes the voltage. There it is. <laughs> After plugging in the jumpers, the voltage is uh, even better. <laughs> that's, uh, that's good. It's really good. So there it is. Um, now that uh, the voltage is uh, well adjusted, um, I'm going to uh, rearrange the bench again. I'm going to uh, plug in the um, oscilloscope that's up here. So we're going to uh, change the angle again. Then I'm going to uh, put the uh, uh, load that we've uh, um, uh, done in another video. Hook this up and uh, take the tap off to the oscilloscope and then we can uh, actually adjust the output bias and the uh, voltage the output it's really spot on it's dropping for some reason but hey it's uh, almost spot on i'm just going to uh, tweak it up a bit and it's just going to work a treat so there it is so uh, <laughs> before we go to the uh, uh oscilloscope to adjust the bias i forgot to do one thing um thing is <laughs> part of the uh of the procedure to uh adjust this is we've done the uh, regular to 12 volts that's great but now there is another thing uh before we go to adjust the bias on the oscilloscope we need to adjust the bias uh with a multimeter so uh you just go here on tp2 and the output is at uh, 9.2 something uh, and you need to adjust this down to 6 volts so that's basically um at uh, the midpoint between the rail, the 12 volt rail. And uh, the reason for that is just because uh, in the oscilloscope we're going to be uh, trying to see uh, the clipping point to make it symmetrical. And just putting it uh, somewhere around a 6 volt mark uh, is uh, a long ways there already. Because um, it's going to be around that 6 volt mark, the, the optimum bias point. But it is not there. It, it's uh, in this case, uh, it's been a long time since I've done this design um but by looking at this schematic i'm pretty sure that it's going to be a, a bit uh, uh, a bit more yeah i'm going to say that okay so it's going to be a, a bit more than a six volts or maybe a bit less i, I can't remember to be honest it's been uh, that long <laughs> so yeah we're going to uh, look into this later but first uh, let's jump on over to the oscilloscope. There, it's going to just be uh, AC coupled, so it doesn't matter. So, you're just going to uh, twiddle the spot until we get a symmetrical uh, clipping. So, here it is. Let's let's go for it. So, here we are. I've uh, hooked up the oscilloscope and the dummy load. So, uh, this cable is going into the dummy load right here. It's uh, currently uh, on. Uh, I have it set for 600 ohms, but I'm going to. Uh, uh, Tame that down to uh, 300 because uh, my headphone is 300 ohms. So uh, yeah, just uh, use the a uh, 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 load as if it was the headphone that's going to be used in. Now here we have the oscilloscope that's uh, just measuring the tap here, and uh, we are getting. A, a, I'm putting in a, a one volt peak to peak signal in the input, and uh, you're getting a, a quite nice uh, seven volt peak to peak at the output so uh, that's pretty nice we have a very nice whole uh, integer number uh, of a uh, uh, amplification and hey yeah power devices here on the i'm just i'm being very careful not to touch the uh, the mains here but uh, the power devices here in the uh, voltage regulator stage uh, they are they have been on for uh, let's say uh, five minutes and they're not even like warm you can you can feel that they are a warmer but uh <laughs> They are, I can literally, this is completely comfortable to uh, have the fingers on. And the output devices here on, of the amplifier, they are, again, same thing, just uh, mildly warm. <laughs> uh, 
So the whole uh, uh, heat design of this was very nicely done. Uh, so yeah, kudos to me. <laughs> but uh, now let's talk about biasing. So what we want to do here, uh, let me uh, bring this schematic again. So during the schematic, uh, what we are going to be adjusting is this right here, R13. I made a little mistake here on the board. I've uh, put the uh, reference designator for R13 uh, and I mixed it with uh, R12. So uh, that's a bit mixed up there in the board, but hey, that's just a, a minor thing. So R13, what it, it does is it bias, as you can see here, it bias the DC operating point of the uh, output of the amplifier. The AC operating point is given by uh, the ratio between R17 and R12. And uh, that's what's given us the uh, seven uh, times gain. Okay, so the 68K for the 10K. Uh, of course, there are variations. There's, these are all 5% uh, resistors so that's why i've got the uh the discrepancy there that's why it's uh, given as an amplification of a seven instead of a 6.8 hey that's uh, not a problem and again uh now what we need to do is we need to uh, uh adjust this so that the clipping here in the output is uh symmetrical so that it clips uh at the bottom as soon as it clips on the top symmetrically that way we are literally at the middle operating point of the amplifier. Let's do just that. So first, uh, let me increase the input and see when we start clipping. So 1.1 volts peak to peak of an input, 1.2, 1.4, 1.5, and as you can see, it's already clipping here at the top. So <laughs> what I've said before that uh, uh, we needed to uh, put the operating point a little bit higher than 6 volts. Actually, it's going to be lower than 6 volts. So, yeah. um, so let's put this in here. So, uh, I'm going to be adjusting R13 so that uh, we get a little bit of a symmetrical clipping. So, uh, let's see. If I do this, it clips more. If I go uh, clockwise, it stops clipping. So stopped clipping so let's go higher oh okay now it's clipping in the bottom so now i need to go back and as you can see it's a uh, pretty clipping uh, pretty much uh symmetrical nope the top part is clipping more there it is so now let's uh, increase it to uh, 1.7 volts uh, and yeah let me see, so this is at a 600, at a 300 ohms, so it's 600, not a lot of difference, but uh, if I start going lower, as you can see, uh, it's it drops uh, quite dramatically, and uh, you can just uh, play around with this until you get something that's uh, desirable, and hey, I'll say that here, let me uh, increase this, yeah, it's clipping. Uh, somewhat symmetrically. Yeah, now this is good enough. So at 1.6, it uh, just starts clipping on both sides of the sine wave. So uh, uh, that's good. So there it is. I've biased the output correctly. Now it's uh, clipping symmetrically, and you can, as you can see, it's clipping. Uh, it's clipping point. Let's just go a bit lower. Uh, at the onset of clipping, we are getting around um, uh, 10.5 volts peak to peak. So that's a lot. <laughs> I would never use this uh, this amplifier nowhere near this because uh, at that point I'm just uh, getting deaf. So yeah, uh, now it's uh, properly biased. Um, now let's just uh, out of uh, curiosity, let me just fire up the uh, multimeter here. Uh, won't be a don't mean this, but uh, let me just see where was the optimum bias point. So it was at uh, 5.5 volts. So let me uh, bring this in here. So yeah, 5.5. And the, the, the interesting bit is that it was that on 5.5 volts. Let me go to the high definition 
Mode of the fluke. Yep. <laughs> wow, that is literally like 5.5 is exactly. That's really nice. So yeah. So that was the uh, um, optimum uh, bias for this board. But hey, uh, as soon as we put the other board here, which is the uh, what I'm going to be doing next, is uh, putting this on top. Uh, I mean, that may be uh, a bit different because uh, hey, there are the tolerances and the resistors and everything. Yeah, so huh. let me uh, um, uh, disconnect everything here and uh, screw in this board and uh, let's do the whole thing again. So, see you in a bit. So, I've just finished uh, assembling the uh, top part. So, the uh, uh, this would be the uh, right channel. So, it is already in place. Uh, now what I've got to do is uh, adjust the uh, voltage regulator. So let's go here to TP1. And as you can see, it's uh, <laughs> extremely low. It's at uh, 5.4 volts. So let's change that. So if we go clockwise, it will increase. Oh, forgot to take out jumpers. There we go. So if we go clockwise, this increases. So, we got the 12 volts. Now, uh, again, let's do the same thing that we've done before. Uh, let's uh, hop on over to the oscilloscope and then uh, adjust the bias in here. Oh, but hey, I, I remember this. So, before we go, let's actually adjust the, uh, the midpoint there. So, we should put this at around a uh, Six volts. There we go. Good enough. So that's six volts. So uh, now we can go to the uh, oscilloscope and actually adjust the uh, biasing properly so that uh, the uh, clipping is symmetrical. So be right back. So <laughs> I've got everything uh, hooked up here. So now I've uh, changed the setup a bit. So now I have uh, both channels going into the uh, dummy load. So, but I'm only um, checking the uh, right channel. So uh, now oh, let me just disconnect this since it's no longer needed. Uh, let me uh, turn the amplifier on. So there it is. We've got an output again, same thing as before. We've got uh, one volt peak to peak in. And that's already a problem. Because let me just check the uh, other one here. So, move things up. So, as you can see, we already have a problem. So, on the left channel, we have a 6.96 volts. And if we switch to the uh, oh, this one just doesn't want to come in. Why is it okay? There we go. So now, if we switch to the uh, right channel, the right channel is at uh, 7.2 volts, so that's pretty sad. So that means that we have a, a discrepancy in the uh, resistors here on the uh, few bed network, the uh, R17 and R12. Again, uh, you can get the schematic and everything on the GitHub repository. So uh, that's because of the uh, uh, changes that we've made uh, regarding the uh, resistors. So since the, these are 5% and the bottom ones are 1%, we get a, a discrepancy there. Uh, hey, not to worry, I can just uh, uh, unhook everything up here. That's the, the beauty of this design. Uh, and then just uh, replace the uh, resistors on the bottom board so that they match. Uh, that's very important. This uh, these should match. Uh, and since they're not matching, I really need to take care of that. But hey, um, let, uh, let's bias this here so that uh, at least uh, we get this over with. Uh, I won't film uh, the whole thing after this, so uh, I'll just uh, replace the resistors. Uh, make sure everything is matching and uh, move on. So then that'll be the, the next video where I'm going to be uh, um, 
uh, hooking it up to the distortion analyzer and we know all the measurements uh, that's the one that uh, we'll have a, a, a matched pair of amplifiers okay so uh, let me uh, stop uh, rambling and uh, adjust the bias in here so uh, again same thing let me uh, put this on the onset of clipping there it is and uh, I can just bring this back and yeah hey this uh yeah this looks pretty symmetrical so yeah we're at uh, 1.6 volts uh input and uh it's into a 600 ohm load uh if i go down to a 300 ohm load you can see that the, the uh, bottom part of the uh, waveform just gets cut out a tiny little bit so uh let me uh, adjust this because hey, i want this for a 300 ohm so there it is. And this looks pretty symmetrical. So uh, that's it. So this is done. Uh, not entirely done because I will have to um, uh, take this whole thing out and actually replace the uh, uh, resistors in the bottom board for the uh, feedback network, which is sad, but hey, that's a pretty uh, simple thing to do. So yeah, uh, this was it. Uh, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video. Uh, in the next one, I'll be, uh, uh, hopefully, before next year, I'll be um, doing the measurements on this. I'll have uh, the whole thing uh, with the sides on and the top cover in as well. And I still have to uh, paint them, <laughs> primary them up and paint, so that's uh, uh, a whole load of work. But uh, I hope uh, that uh, by the next video, I've got everything done so that uh, we can actually do the measurements. So we'll replace the resistors, button everything up, and we can uh, uh, do some uh, measurements, see how uh, this stacks up. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, if you have any questions or any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.